Oh my god, why is this? I need a new chair. <laughs> I'm back, wearing makeup. We're doing it, guys. I think after a month of not wearing makeup and then like the first like week and a half into quarantine, I just was not in the mood to wear makeup. My doctor gave me clearance to start wearing makeup. Um, I think the first week of quarantine, but of course I couldn't go in to physically see her, even though she has to see my eye under a microscope to see how the graft is healing. She just gave me the okay over the phone and said to be careful, proceed with caution. And I was like, <laughs> I'm still really nervous, but I feel like my eye looks pretty good. Um, it still tends to get like a little red, but it's pretty much healed. So I'm ready to jump back into it. And I didn't want to do anything too crazy, first of all, because I know all of us are staying at home, right? You guys are at home watching this from the comfort of, you know, your bedroom, living room, kitchen, bathroom. I'm not mad at you if you're watching this while on the toilet, okay? You, you gotta do what you gotta do during these times. So, um, I know you guys are watching this from home and I wanted to do something that was suitable for the current situation and something that I think anyone can do if they have to hop on a conference call. That was a huge reality check for me the other day. I had to do a conference call and it was really early in the morning and I was like, you know, the excuse is it's early. I looked tired, like my hair was all crazy. I wasn't wearing makeup. I was not like in like true pajamas, but uh, home clothes that like didn't look the best um and i was like pretty confident gonna go on this conference call and then i saw myself on my front facing camera and i was like wow you look exhausted like it was just written all over my face i mean i wasn't like physically like oh i'm so tired but like i had just woken up i had like 15 20 minutes to get ready so i decided to do a quick look this is it right here we're gonna keep it really simple for today it's also gonna be eyeglass wearing friendly nothing to me is grosser than when I have a full face on, I put my glasses on and I can feel it just slipping and sliding right here. It really, in my head, I'm like, I'm just asking for a breakout in that area because it's just, it feels, ugh, ugh, I don't like that feeling. I'm very particular about the products in this video. I really wanted to highlight a lot of my um, friends in this industry like I did for 12 Days of Christmas who are technically small business owners. Times are tough right now, so um, if I can support them in any way possible, I will. And so expect a lot of their products to show up in my next couple tutorials because I want to support them as best as I can. So this tutorial is eyeglass wearing friendly, video call friendly, and I'm also gonna highlight my uh, friends and their small businesses um, in this space. So if you guys are interested and wanna check it out, keep on watching. <laughs> I'm gonna start by priming my skin with Summer Fridays. This is Mariana Hewitt and Lauren Gores' company, and they also recently came out with the lip balm, which I will apply a little refresher so you guys can see it. It may very well become my new favorite. It is already rivaling my Clarins Moisture Replenishing Lip Balm. That's my absolute favorite. But this one has a sweeter taste to it. It's a little more on the vanilla side, whereas the Clarins one doesn't have a flavor, but they're both just as cushiony. So I like them both equally right now, not one more than the other, but I do, it takes a lot for me to love a lip balm and I really like that one. But first, let's apply Jet Lag Mask. I had a DM from someone just now that said, that's a mask, you shouldn't apply it as a moisturizer. It's a multi-use product, you can use it even underneath the eyes as eye cream, you can layer it on really thick for a mask, and it has like a really light, refreshing mint scent to it. And then I'm going to pop on the Lip Butter Balm. It just has that consistency that I love, which is really nice and cushiony. And it has that finish that makes it look like you're wearing a gloss on your lips, but it's just a lip balm. And the packaging is super cute. Next up, I want to highlight Chris and Dominique and her company Dominique Cosmetics. She just came out with these skin glosses. It is a cream highlighter and I lately have been really into cream highlighters, liquid highlighters. They just look more like a glossy, dewy skin finish and more realistic than powder unless you um, spray your, uh, your highlight afterwards with like a setting mist or Fix Plus. I really love that she came out with these. They're really, she's really good at making large sized uh, products. She doesn't jip you whatsoever. You know sometimes you get a product and you're like, wow, this is not enough. I'm gonna finish this like $50 product 
in a day. She makes like jumbo size products and I really appreciate that being someone that is not delicate whatsoever with makeup application. And the same thing goes for her eyeshadow palettes. The eyeshadows are huge. So this is brand new. I'm gonna use the shade Golden Dew to highlight my skin before anything else so that way my glow looks natural in a video conference and I'm not like blinding people through my Zoom call. <laughs> Obviously if you work in beauty then like you wanna look, you know? glammed up or maybe maybe you don't i don't know but sometimes it can be distracting if it's like a really professional meeting and you're just like beaming so this is going to be a little more uh subtle if you will like you're naturally glowing so for this i'm gonna take my finger work it into the product and i'm gonna apply it to the high points not in a perfect way at all because I'm gonna blend it with a little kabuki brush afterwards. So I'm even going on the brow bone. And look at that instant highlight it gave me. And this does come, oh my God, my ear. This has been so infected, you guys. In case you guys catch a glimpse of it. I'm trying to take care of it, but if you have any tips, it keeps snagging every time I put like a shirt on or I swear Boomer, my husky, the puppy husky, I swear he licks it when I'm sleeping. But um, if you guys have any tips on how to take care of an infected cartilage ear piercing, let me know. So yeah, just be pretty messy with it. Or not messy, but apply it where you want it to go, but don't focus too hev heavily on it being like a perfect application with your fingertips. So this is the shade Golden Dew that I'm using. She also has Copper Light, which is more bronze, Glossed Peach, and Sunset Glow. So once I have that highlight on there, I'm going to take a small kabuki brush and I'm going to buff this out. And it's okay if it doesn't stay to the area that you want highlighted because we're going to add concealer still. It's going to just kind of peek through the concealer, so it's not going to look as strong as it does right now, especially if you got it on other areas aside from just the high points of the face. These two concealers right here are my secret weapons for a quick and easy, fast, lightning speed look put together type of makeup. I would say it's similar to shape tape without that drying effect. So it gives you the coverage that you want. It stays, you don't have to use a lot of powder with it. It doesn't really crease on your under eyes and I have like the world's creasiest under eyes. <laughs> so uh, I really vouch for this concealer and I use two shades. I use 2W on my face because it matches uh, my skin tone the best. And then I use 2N underneath my eyes uh, because it's a little more brightening with that neutral undertone. So I'm gonna go in with 2W Light Medium Warm first, and here's what I'm gonna do, okay, when you're in a rush. You don't wanna fully slather this concealer all over your face. What you wanna do is dot it or apply it where you need the most coverage. For me, it's obviously gonna be on this rash around here and my under eyes to look a little more awake. So. I'm gonna start by applying it right here. I don't know about you guys, but I get a lot of redness around my nose. This concealer is such a good match for my face. I never thought I would find a single toned or colored concealer that does that, and this one really works for me. So now what I do is with a kabuki brush, I'm gonna stipple this into the areas that need the most coverage, and then whatever's left over on the brush, I'm just gonna lightly buff it everywhere else, because sometimes when you dot concealer on your face, it's really obvious where the concealer is on your face and where it's not, so just lightly buffing it everywhere else will make it look like you put foundation and concealer all over, but you didn't, so I'm using this Hourglass Kabuki brush and I'm just gonna lightly stipple. So I'm not using a heavy hand, I'm just bouncing it onto the skin. And I'm really gonna avoid the area where my glasses will sit, but still get the crevices of the nose, if you will. And then once I'm done blending out where it was spotted on the face, I'm just gonna lightly buff. And I don't know if you can really tell on camera, but in person, it literally looks like there's no makeup on my forehead at all, which is great if you tend to get that line of uh, makeup on your forehead from scrunching your forehead. I know I get it, especially right now the Botox is running low, you know what I'm saying? So <laughs> it really works to um, reduce that line. But see how it looks like I have a full face of foundation on, but I don't. And that is awesome if you're gonna work from home and wanna leave it on all day so that you feel good. I don't know, something about makeup just like brightens up my mood. Now I'm gonna go in with the shade 2N, which is a little bit lighter. It just looks lighter because it's neutral. And I am going to 
try and cover just that little line that we get. Do you see that if I look straight forward, there's like this little line right here. That's what you wanna cover to cover up your dark spots. They're the main culprits for making it look like we look tired, especially if you wake up puffy. But there's no need to do that full highlighting motion and do like a triangle and you don't wanna go too heavy with it. We're just trying to look awake. When I blend that out, I'm also going to do the same thing that I did for the face for the eyes. So I'm gonna drag whatever is left over on the brush onto the eyelid because as you can see, I have a little bit of discoloration, but I'm not too bothered by it. I think it kind of looks like eyeshadow. So I'm gonna use this little Kabuki brush also by Hourglass and I'm just going to pat this concealer in. And I always go in with the brush first when I'm trying to keep it to a certain area. And then I'll go in with the sponge just to pick up any excess product. Again, I'm avoiding the sides of the nose. You can see there's no concealer there. By the way guys, while I'm blending this out, if I ever sound repetitive, like when I keep talking about my eye surgery or just like little updates, I do that because, you know, sometimes people, like this is their first time watching my channel or maybe they haven't watched that video. So I always like to give updates just in case because if not, then I'll get questions like, why can't you wear makeup? Like what happened? So I don't mean to sound repetitive, but I feel like sometimes it's necessary to keep everyone up to date. So once that is done, I'm gonna go in with my um, dose of color sponge and I'm just gonna blend it out a little more. And if you go in with one layer and you feel like you still have dark under eye circles, I feel like mine first try actually got pretty covered up. Sometimes that doesn't happen. You can go in with a little more just on the little indent on your eyes. So I'll show you how to do that. So blended it out. If I felt like I needed a little more, I would just dot it right there, like that, the smallest amount, and then blend it back out. Now I'm just gonna set everything. Even though this concealer doesn't really crease, it doesn't really move, I still wanna use the powder because if I end up wearing it all day long, if I don't use the powder, it'll look crazy by the end of the day. So I'm gonna be uh, pretty minimal with my powder application as well. Cheers. All my brushes, I can't find anything. I love using this LH uh, 304 brush by Linda Helberg. She's an amazing artist. Um, if you guys don't follow her, because her looks are so inspirational. Um, and her brushes are some of the best synthetic brushes I've ever used. I'm gonna dip them directly into my powder. This is actually, I forgot about this powder. It's the Urban Decay Ultimate Brush Off Set and Go Powder. Uh, it comes with a brush in the container, which I'm not a huge fan of, but the powder itself is really, really nice. Always before you set with powder, pick up any excess creasing, blend it out. If not, you're gonna set those creases in place with the powder. So I'm just gonna blend it out. So I'm just kind of pressing it in until it disappears. And then I might do like a little sweeping motion just to knock off any excess powder. And I like to go this way and this way, back and forth. So I press in this direction, press in the other direction. And then towards the end, I'll just kind of sweep away the excess powder. And I'm gonna hit all the spots where I tend to crease a lot. And then I'm gonna take a kabuki brush and just Press that powder mainly into like the cheeks and the hollows just because I'm going to add bronzer and blush and I want it to blend out. If you try and add your bronzer and blush over top of just moisturized wet skin, it sticks and gets really blotchy. So you want to just press it in so that way your bronzer blends out really nicely. And then if you find that your forehead's a little too shiny, you can add a little powder there too. You could leave it here, really simple, really clean. Uh, but if you wanna, you know, add a little definition, look a little chiseled, we're gonna take it a couple steps further, also with the brows and the lashes. So I'm going to bronze next, and I like to go in with a bronzer that's a little lighter than what I would typically use, so it doesn't look so dramatic. This is a new one from NARS, it's called Vallarta. Ooh, wouldn't that be nice if we could go there right now? <laughs> take it there. I'm going to uh, use this and apply it to the uh, general areas where I apply bronzer, um, but because it's a lighter shade, it's not going to look as dramatic. Uh, so you could either um, do that if you have a lighter bronzer, maybe like your summer versus your winter bronzer. If not, you can just be very light-handed with your darker bronzer. Because I know I always go really heavy with bronzer. I love looking bronze because I'm not bronzed whatsoever, especially right now. So let me start at the hollows. And I'm keeping it, when I go on the hairline, I'm keeping it really close to the hairline because I have that cream highlighter there and you don't want it to get stuck on the cream highlighter. It could start to look blotchy also. So I'm trying to keep it really far back. Just trying to make it look cohesive with the hollows of the cheeks. And then if you don't want to use blush, you can also take this bronzer onto the apples. 
and it'll make it look like you have some color there also. Under here, under there, to make your lips look nice and plump. I'm just gonna add a little bit right here so that there's that definition, but I don't have to worry about it getting super messy on the sides of my nose with my glasses. And if for some reason it's not looking blended, take that same brush with the powder and then just use that to buff and blend it out. It's definitely harder to blend when you're using, not when you're using less product. Because I didn't use like a heavy amount of powder all across my face, there's certain areas that might be a little more moist than others. I know you guys love that word. Um, especially where I highlighted because I didn't add any powder there. So um, translucent powder really is your friend when it comes to blending and look at that. It just looks a little more soft. You don't see harsh edges and it still doesn't feel or look like I have a ton of makeup on. Uh, I'm going to move into, I think, blush next, and I want to highlight uh, Sona and her company, Persona. She came out with these um, super blushes, and the two tones are so beautiful. I feel like they're just very universal colors. This darker one is called Caramel, and then the lighter one is called Georgia. It's like a really pretty peach color. I feel like uh, caramel is going to look a little more natural, so I'm going to go ahead and just lightly dust this onto my cheeks using that same hourglass brush. And if you don't want your blush to go on super heavy or you're scared that it's going to go on heavy, I always dust a little off on my hand and then apply it. And these blushes are so pretty. They have a very subtle shimmer to them, so they don't go on. Even though they look matte, they have like this nice sheen that makes it look like you're glowing. And I know that looks like a lot, so I'm going to take that same kabuki brush with the powder and just blend it out a little better. Now's a good time to go in with a mist and also a setting spray. I use both because I don't want to douse my face in setting spray to get the makeup to look like skin because it can feel like a lot. So I start with a face mist, something like Fix Plus. I'm going to use something different. I feel like I always use Fix Plus, so I want to use some other products. This one is brand new by Tarte. I just got it. Why does it look so bright? I hope this video hasn't been bright this entire time. <laughs> it's the Tarte Maracuja Miracle Mist. So I'm gonna use this to make like all the powder and everything kind of just sink in and look natural. And then afterwards, I'm gonna spray myself with a Smashbox Photo Finish Setting Spray. This is right up there with Urban Decay All Nighter Setting Spray. Um, it's just like a little more on the sticky side, but it definitely makes your makeup last. So I'm gonna do that after I do the Maracuja Miracle Mist. First time using it here on camera. <laughs> Hopefully it goes well. I like the mist, it's very light. And I like that it's in a aerosol can. I feel like all of my setting sprays have the little whatever it's called, the little like thing that you have to push. This is really nice. You'll see how much more natural the makeup looks after this. I'm gonna let it dry down. I'm actually gonna fan myself with the Patrick Ta fan so I can speed up the process. I think if there was like one tip I could give anyone about making your makeup look more natural, it's definitely to invest in some sort of spray. It doesn't even have to be the fancy ones. I used to use this one that I got at Urban Outfitters. It was like a rose water glycerin mix. Something that's not gonna ruin your makeup, like straight up just like plain water, but something that's going to um, let it all just kind of sink in. I had a friend that used to just do her makeup and then go in the shower. Not actually wet her face, but the steam from the shower because she loved the way her makeup would look afterwards. So there's a free solution for you guys. Just watch that water bill. <laughs> All right, gonna hit myself with the Smashbox setting spray now. Eyeshadow is optional, but okay. I'm gonna further deep into the deep. <laughs> hmm, hmm, hmm. I'm gonna further dip into this palette in another video because I just got to. I mean, look at it. It's so beautiful. But I'm only gonna be using Silhouette because it's like the perfect mid-tone brown, a little dusty, so it's not gonna look like I have a ton of eyeshadow on, it's just gonna contour my eyelids. You can also use your bronzer as well. I just really wanted to, again, showcase some of my friends and their brands. So this is Angel, um, aka Mac Daddy's brand, Artist Couture. I'm sure you guys are familiar with it. Um, he did a collection called Supreme Nude, so it's um, an eyeshadow palette, lipsticks, and I don't know if the highlighters were a part of the collection as well, but either way, um, the whole collection is beautiful. I'm so proud of him. He, I believe, sold out of it during the launch. Um, so if you guys want a little tutorial using the whole collection, let me know because I definitely plan on doing it anyway. <laughs> um, so I'm going to take a small uh, little blending brush, a Smith 230, and I'm going to apply the color um, Silhouette to the crease 
just to add a little bit of contouring and I'll show you before and after from one side to the other. Let me move this mirror out of the way. I feel like it's trying to focus on that. I'm just trying to get used to the new setup guys. So bear with me if I'm like, you know, looking in all sorts of directions and like constantly adjusting. This is just new for me. But also comment down below if you like the new setup because I think it looks a lot more clear and true to color than my last setup. So I'm just gonna lightly blend this into the crease. And when you have glasses on, it won't look as dramatic, but I always like adding something just because I feel like it opens up my eyes and makes it look a little glam, but not too much, especially when the color isn't too orangey, brassy, or warm. I feel like warm toned eyeshadows can look like you're definitely wearing something. So using something that has like this cool undertone to it, which is why your bronzer would be perfect as well, is a good idea. Probably should have done that before I misted my face. It was a little more difficult to blend, but I forgot I was gonna add eyeshadow. So basically, moral of the story, do all your powders before you mist yourself. They'll blend a lot easier. Powder over powder blends a lot easier than powder over setting spray. Um, but I wasn't expecting to do anything on my eyes and then I got, you know, really into it. Um, I'm also gonna take a little bit more of the skin gloss and I'm just gonna tap a little onto the eyelid to create like a nice little sheen right there. So I'm picking it up and then just kind of blending it onto the back of my hand so that way it doesn't go on heavy on the eyelid. So I'm just gonna blend it onto like right there. I don't like to add uh, cream highlighters to the inner corner because I feel like there's usually concealer there and it'll ruin it. So just on the eyelid is perfect to create that illusion that you have like a nice glossy lid, see that? For brows, I'm keeping it super simple with just a tinted brow gel. This is Maybelline's uh, Gel Mascara in the shade Deep Brown. First time using it, but I really trust in brow gels that look like this. I used to be afraid of them because I thought they would make my brows look really heavy. And I feel like because I don't ever tweeze my brows, they end up looking a little more full where needed, but not uh, too thick. Whereas before I used to think like, oh my God, if I use a tinted brow gel, it's gonna look like I have the thickest brows in the entire world, but it actually works, if, especially if I'm really light-handed with it. So I'm just gonna lightly... This brush has uh, a side with longer bristles and a side with shorter. I'm using the longer bristles and I'm just gonna lightly comb this. So I'm not pressing hard because I've learned with brow gels, you can end up getting it on your skin and then it ends up looking kind of messy. So I just very, very lightly brush onto the brow hairs. And I like brushing my brow hairs up to get that like glossier finish. It fills in the sparse areas, but not to an extreme. They don't look like a carved out brow is basically what I'm trying to say. They just look more put together. I'm gonna use what is probably my favorite mascara that doesn't require a lot of product, the um, It Cosmetics Superhero Mascara. I don't know if those of you who wear glasses out there, if you feel like your glasses kind of become the focal point, you wanna be the one wearing the glasses, you don't want the glasses to wear you, especially with really thick frames like the ones that I like to wear. And that's why I like to do my brows and a little bit of eyeshadow so that my eyes don't get lost in the thick black frames. And then I'm gonna use my favorite Laura Lash Mascara, L'Oreal Voluminous in Brown Black. It just tends to transfer less and look more natural, which is why I always use it on my lower lashes. I'm gonna wipe off the lip balm even though I'm going to reapply it because I'm gonna go into the liner just to define my lips and if there's lip balm there, you're not gonna get the color payoff from your lip liner and it's gonna kind of slide everywhere. Um, and I just wanna use a lip liner that is similar to my natural lip color. It's just going to enhance the shape so I'm gonna use this uh, House Labs lip liner in the shade M Point. On point. See how that just kind of mimics my natural lip color? And then I'm gonna proceed to just lightly blend it into the rest of my lip, but I don't want it to feel heavy, so I'm gonna use my finger or a brush to just blend that color into my lips. And for the final step, I'm just blending in that same Summer Fridays lip butter bomb into the lip liner. Ta-da! That took a lot longer to film than what it was supposed to. <laughs> Trust me when I say that this look takes me 10 to 15 minutes, maybe even less. I can do it so quick, especially with just that concealer. But filming always takes like double, triple the time. <laughs> Glasses are on, which means that is a wrap on this video. Little baby steps, jumping back into it with something really simple that you guys can wear right now while staying at home, taking business calls and just Something to brighten up the day, brighten up your mood, feel a little bit better. I think makeup, it's something 
so awesome that it has the ability to just brighten your mood even with just like a little bit of concealer. It makes me feel good and I hope that this tutorial does the same for you guys. Um, hang in there, uh, we're all in this together and um, I just wanted to do this to kick things off uh, with my makeup tutorials because I know I haven't been doing any uh, due to my eye surgery and like I said, baby steps, we're getting back into it, getting back into the swing of things and I just saw Roxette on Instagram stories rocking like a neon orange eyeshadow and I'm ready. So I hope you guys are too. Let me know if you liked this tutorial. If you did, give it a like. Share it with anyone who might be, um, you know, feeling a little down right now or needs like a little pick me up. I hope that this tutorial brightens up their day. And of course, don't forget to subscribe, hit that notification bell, and I will see you in my next video. Bye guys. Mwah. Air hugs, kisses, six feet away, always. <laughs>